project. So thanks for that. So the uh, um, the intended outcomes then of the project um, to uh, to really sort of prepare the students for to better prepare them for the level. And really, this is kind of an intervention. Uh, you know, we need to better prepare. Them. How do we do that? Do we do it in September, October, when the start of third level, when they're, they're already into the, into learning and they've got their, their new modules and all of socialization? They're not, they're not, that's not really the time to do it. Um, so what we try to do is to intervene and bring it into the schools. This was the, the intention of it. So the project then worked with uh, seven partners, uh, Northwest and Midwest clusters. Uh, you can see the partners there. Um, and some of, the, some of the people are here today, some of them are currently able to, to attend. Um, so what we, what we looked at was um, a MOOC consisting of four modules, scholarly learning, uh, critical creative thinking, communication, digital literacy, and responsible citizenship. Um, before they go into those modules, they have an orientation um, module, and then at the end they have a kind of reflection module. So we was looking at the six week MOOC. Sorry, the, uh, Keeps jumping back to uh, to, uh, to a twenty second interval there. So there the and then there were three additional moves. So there was a move for the parents of uh, those students, and then a move for um, <coughs> the staff really supporting that process. And then the final one transitioning out of learners from the workplace for the higher education. We don't have to do that now because James and his team have done that for us. So uh, we're, we're grateful to them. Um, so the. The, the working title was, uh, was was the transition MOOC. The project title is Get Ready Education. Get Ready Done Education is the website um, and the tagline the learning journey. So the project outputs uh, to date up until up to this month. So we established the course name and the logo. Um, we, we established the domain name, which is there. We set up a, a Twitter account for that. Um, for a lot of the pupils used in the pilot, we have 40% have, uh, have Twitter accounts. Um, so we piloted that MOOC in December to seven schools and we evaluated the feedback in from January. Um, and these were the uh, these were the seven schools, the number of um, participants are there. So 23% of the pupils completed 100% of the course. Uh, past mark was set at 80%. 27.5% of the pupils completed 90 to 100%. And 35% uh, completed 80 to 100 percent of course. Um, the research kind of shows that, um, some research, research in, in the state shows that the 20% of participants in an online course, that they, they will complete, they will complete whatever mode of delivery they get. And then there's 60% who really uh, complete with support. And then there's about 20% who really <coughs> Um, I think looking at those, those figures, you can see that some of the schools were very successful, and some of them weren't so successful. Uh, and one of the one of the findings really there is that if you've got a member of staff who's very enthusiastic and really champions this works for them, um, as we had in those two schools, that it's that it's more successful than it is if you have a, a teacher or guidance counselor who's not um, doesn't basically invest as much energy into it. So the feedback that we had from the, from the students were in these areas, navigation design, content, socialization, and, and incentives. So in terms of the navigation, they, 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 they felt that it was a little difficult to navigate. What we piloted was the orientation week and the first week, the first module. So they found it um, difficult to navigate, so we improved the navigation on that. In terms of the content, they wanted more interactive content, like quizzes, um, shorter videos. In terms of socialization, they suggested uh, Facebook and, and Twitter to, to actually, and also to encourage teachers to offer photographs and to, to engage on Twitter. Um, in terms of the incentives, um, we'll come on to this now. What we, what we gave them was a, a digital badge, a pilot uh, badge for completing this. Uh, and some of them found one sure what a digital badge, badge was, uh, some of them thought it was a physical badge that they would get. So we talked about CAO points, and that was, that was the big one for the, the pupils. So we're going to come back to that. 
So in terms again of the project output content and development, there's four modules. <coughs> excuse me. Um, you see we've we've completed three of the four in terms of the content. We have that. Uh, the last one there, responsible citizenship, we've got half of that. In terms of the loop development, then which is taking the content, putting it onto the, to the platform. Uh, we've got uh, discover learning is is complete. Critical modules two and three, six, seven percent of the last one. In terms of promotion, we've, we've leaflets here, we've some, uh, printed out some leaflets which are going to be circulated. Uh, we've some out today. There's the SESCON conference on Saturday, and I'm very glad to see you at G. talked about, she was talking about a little different, she was talking about transition, but she did mention the, the project uh, around the Career Guidance Council was there, and she uh, made a lot of contacts with Guidance Councils. Uh, we had a forum insight last year. Conference presentations coming up, Jennifer is going to talk with Google Root uh, Ireland and UK about this project and particularly about the, the new the platform um, and talk with the OSC Direct Conference in uh, New Orleans in April. And we've had a, a, a staff symposium in Slido where we talk about this. And I think around the institutions we're looking at meetings of guidance councils to, to promote it to them and promoting it into the school as well. Uh, we're working now on two videos, uh, two or three videos, one for the students and one for the teachers, the guidance counsellors and, and the principals. So 97 videos, uh, they'll be completed by the end of March, or the third week of March, um, with, with, with a different angle, two different messages really. One is to the, to the students in order to encourage them to get engaged, and one is to the, to the teachers. Um, and, you know, I think the big thing is, is about getting buy-in from each of the, the key players in this and the stakeholders and realizing the, the value of, of, of what this is. Um, and that's part of the challenge of the project. Um, so that, that we're now going to run a second pilot. I think we've got a lot out of, of, of the first pilot um, the project. We were looking to, this was a change in our timeline because we were looking to, to start the MOOC in, uh, in April. But really the feedback from the schools was this that wasn't a good time to get it into their, um, into their calendar. So we're, we're going to take the three modules that will be finished in the next few weeks and we'll do a pilot of those from, from early April. And we'll to get more schools involved. And I think to, to really sort of talk to the schools and to get them to, to, to get somebody who, who will really champion this. And they don't have to do the, the full book, they maybe take one or two modules. And I think some more flexibility around the time. Um, so this is the this is the interface, and in terms of uh, showing you a little bit about the project, uh, the video here. Students simply log in and start the MOOC. They are presented with a welcome screen containing all the MOOC information: a student orientation, discover learning module, critical and. Well, you know, what's different about this is the MOOC um, is that most most MOOCs, I think, as you know, are self-directed. We made the decision early on that this this wasn't going to work, but again, the research showed that for this particular uh, demographic profile, that a uh, self-directed MOOC wasn't really achieve the results that we wanted it to do. We really want um, the students to complete this and go through this process. So, the, really. There's this uh, interweaving of the pupils, the teachers, and the e moderator uh, that come together. We'll have a look at that um, at the this video and see how that, how that works and how that plays out. So it's it is something that really needs a lot more support and a lot more structure than uh, the standard of so the pupil and Coursera and the platform. But I think, again, research shows that uh, what the, the school principals and teachers want us to, um, to see something that they can measure the activity of the learning of the students. Simply log in and start the MOOC. 
They are presented with a welcome screen containing all the MOOC information, a student orientation, discover learning module, critical and creative thinking, digital literacy and communications, responsible citizenship, reflection and surveys in order to gather feedback on the MOOC. Within the orientation, the student is brought through a series of exercises in order to familiarise themselves with the MOOC. We use Moodle Books in order to produce text documents, which can be printed out. Optional activities are classroom activities, which can be carried out by students within the class. Students are asked to carry out a task and work within a group to present their findings. E-activities use a discussion board format where students collaborate together and learn from each other, sharing ideas and common thoughts. A teacher orientation area has been designed in order to guide teachers through the MOOC. Teachers act as support by guiding the students through the MOOC. Students participate in group work, online activities such as e-activities, quizzes and lessons. So that gives you a sense of the, of the Moodle. I mean, we, had, um, we worked with, with Moodle as a, as a platform because it's really because of two pathways that we wanted to create and we wanted to bring in the moderation and the teaching as well. And a lot of the Moodle platforms don't really allow for that. Um, so we've, we've, we've really customized Moodle ourselves. Okay, so this is really, uh, this slide really just shows the interaction of the three kind of key players as we, as we see it. Um, but the, the, these interactive areas, so we've got synchronous face to face activity, which is really the classroom activity where the student and the teachers are together. We've got asynchronous activity with students, teachers, and even moderators really up on, up on their own. Um, and then we've got areas where the e moderator can support the teacher in an online environment. Them asynchronously. Uh, the teacher can also engage with looking at uh, their own, looking at the support that they have in the, in the MOOC itself. And then in the centre there's this sort of synchronous face-to-face uh, -face online activity where the teachers and the students come together. The moderator can be, can be uh, lending support and looking in and engaging with that interaction. Okay, so uh, we touched upon this earlier, the currency of the MOOC, digital badge, this is what, the, what they've got here. Um, other, I suppose, in terms of kind of micro-credentialing or credentialing of, of uh, MOOC participation, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of research in this at the moment. Um, certificate of completion, a lot of the MOOC providers uh, issue certificate of completion. We've talked about level five credits, level six credits. I think what, what we've established, what from, from, from the pilots and from talking to, to the pupils is that CAO, CAO points is the language that they, they understand. So I don't know what CAO points are. Uh, these are the, the, the um, central application of yeah, The points that, are, that a leading such student has to get in order to, okay. to, to go onto a program. So uh, it's that you probably use the A levels or levels, so just like But um, here they get uh, each uh, subject that they do. It's, uh, So that's the big carrot, that's what they're working towards, you know, like getting two A's and B or that. Um, and this obviously is going to be a much wider discussion, I think, before we can really get into that discussion, we need to proof of concept this is going to work, have value, have a meaning, actually does improve that transition. But I think it's a conversation that we can start, start talking about it now. Okay, in terms of um, 
open education resources, obviously everything we create is, is open and it's freely available on Creative Commons. We also brought in, uh, this is the Student Ed Learning Project, which is a separate project, um, so we borrowed from that, we use the resources from that. Um, mentioned earlier the, uh, uh, the DCU the projects there, um, we we're going to use this uh, digital toolbox. Also, an IT slide on GMIT, we uh, we part of a project with FGM, FGM, Academic Success Skills for Learning, Skills for Life. And this is something else, this is really for when they start at the university, but again, we can, we can link it with this. Um, the courses that are. In terms of evaluation, I suppose this, it started out, the intention was that it was a standard on the but through the, uh, through the process with the steering committee and the meetings that we had, through the working with the students, we realized that we need two, part, we need two pathways, uh, and, uh, a design platform to accommodate that, and we have that, that iteration there. Uh, in terms of the sustainability, I think that we've, again, as earlier, we've approved that this, this works. Sustainability will require teachers engaging with the project, right? councils engaging with the project, will require Growing the number of e moderators, we can't do it with one or two e moderators. I mean, we talked at the last presentation about how we would use um, perhaps students who've gone through this, they're into the first, second, third year of, uh, of university, and they could then act as e moderators and engage with this. Um, and I think you know, the questions around the CEO points will have to be revisited on this. Okay, let's stop there. Okay. Could you, uh, before you sit down, thank you. Mm -hmm.